So, Malcolm, let me ask you, how would you try to um, determine if somebody might have some of those characteristics that Jim mentioned? Yeah, I, I guess I start by describing our approach to venture capital. We, um, so we, we consider ourselves to be mildly fortunate that we've located here in the Bay Area and we've been investing for a number of years. So we have a mature venture capital portfolio with a number of established venture capital managers. So our assets don't really grow that quickly. We, um, we have endowed assets. The growth in the assets is just the incremental return on investment over what we pay in, in grants. So we have a fairly stable asset base. And what that means is we don't need to always be doing new things in venture capital because we have, have a mature portfolio with a number of established managers. So the bar is high. Um, whether it's an established firm or it's a new firm. And uh, what we're looking for, whether it's established or a next generation firm, is talented people. We want that talent and skill set to match the strategy of the fund. And then we want the fund and the team to be resourced appropriately to pull off the strategy. And uh, Judith, let me ask you, would, would you apply a a different standard perhaps if it was a, a group of fund managers that was looking to invest in an emerging economy or emerging geography, say India and China back in the day, would that have been a different standard that you'd apply to that next gen fund manager versus a Silicon Valley based group? I don't think so. I mean, not in, not in our China practice. I mean, there are certain sort of adaptations that you have to make for uh, you know, different local situations. But I think that the, the base characteristics really are, really should be the same. Now, you know, I think your willingness to sort of appreciate the, the risk mitigants in, in an you know, a tolerate you know different kinds levels of risk. I think in in the U.S. are quite different from what you would tolerate in China. So in China, for instance, you know, those deals have to be extra perfect for us. In the U.S., we can take a little because it's a, a much riskier situation. But in the U.S., we can, you know, we can say, okay, well, that part is not perfect, but we can see how it's you know either not going to hurt returns or could sort itself out quite quite easily. In China, we don't really have the luxury of drawing those conclusions, I think, or making those accommodations. So while the core values and, and characteristics of managers are, are, are quite, are very much the same, um, the assessment of each one of those factors, I think, is, is, a, is a bit different. It's all very complicated. I'm going to just step in um, and nuanced and something that, as an LP, you, like, a, like a venture capitalist builds up experience over, over 10 or more years and figuring out who's going to be a good entrepreneur and who's going to be a good CEO and how that's going to work and uh, in the building of a company, the, the LP figures out over 10 or, or so years um, that combination of characteristics that they think makes a good VC uh, from you know, being an extraordinary visionary as to the future and how we're going to get to the future in a, in a way that's better than the present as well as the company building skills that we talked about you know, in more detail earlier. Um, and it's, it's, it's the whole package coming together in a, in a relatively young firm. It, it's, it's hard, very hard to identify, but we're all out there trying to do it. So there's, um, I would say there's a, a general understanding that the VC industry is in a period of consolidating or has consolidated. Uh, fund sizes are, are smaller than they might have been five or ten years ago. Uh, does that trend bode well for the next generation fund manager, would you say? Uh, Anita, thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's, that's all good for, for the industry. Um, and you know, just adding on, on um, uh, Georgiana and, and Judith's comments, that, you know, in terms of what we're looking for, there really is no set formula for, um, for evaluating a, uh, a next gen or emerging manager. I mean, what you really want, um, you know, ideally, is 
to feel comfortable with a group that, you know, hopefully they're a team that's worked together for in, in the strategy that um, they're pursuing and has been able to deliver um, consistent outperformance in terms of results, you know, uh, that they can source, they can add value, that ca they can successfully exit and have, you know, the ability to show that they have done that in the past. Um, are you going to get all of those things? Probably not, you know, is that a strict checklist? No, but, um, you know, in terms of investing in, in one of these managers, it is a level of comfort and probably also um, there's an element of risk taking on the LP um, uh, side as well and, and making judgment calls. Uh, Judith, let me ask you, if uh, I heard Jim say that it's not that easy to transition from being a CEO of a successful company to being a VC. Uh, if you had uh, a group, uh, a couple successful uh, entrepreneurs who uh, were coming to you uh, and they were trying to decide whether they should bring in an experienced VC who, th who they haven't worked yet with, uh, would you view that as a positive thing that they should do that would make them more attractive or would you rather see them work as a team that, that, that they know each other? Well, you know, in the absence of additional information, Mark, I'd, ha I'd have to say that, you know, the chemistry is really huge. And I don't think you can just bolt on someone into these, into these groups, right? So I would say that, you know, if the, the, the two younger people had worked together, had done some deals together, and had, you know, some basis for a relationship and, and a notion that they had some relevance in, in this world, Perhaps the you know the more experienced GP could be to, could be brought on in a less permanent way, you know, advise them on some deals, hang out with them for you know a year or two, see if it fits because this whole sort of just bolting on because it would make people like me feel better about the deal invariably fails. So I, I think there's another way to see if there's a good fit and any value added you know from from either party without sort of bringing them in in you know full time GP role. Jim, what advice would you give to a, a, a successful entrepreneur who sold his company and decides he'd like to try to transition to becoming a VC? Uh, he's trying to decide, should he do some angel investing on his own? Should he try to become a venture partner of sorts with a fund? What, what advice would you give somebody like, or, or to do something else? Well, somewhat it depends on the size of the capital and how many resources that entrepreneur can bring around themselves. I've seen some set up models with an internal team that helps them to decide what deals to do. But if it's someone who really wants to get into the career of being a venture capitalist, I thought Judith's advice was right on the mark. What they should do is come in and <clears throat> work as a venture partner or in some capacity where they see how the firm works. Uh, they're engaged enough that the chemistry starts to emerge, uh, hopefully not in the sex and city format of the discussion on the last panel, which I thought was a great discussion, by the way, but uh, um, really gets integrated to the partnership, understanding how it works, uh, what's going on in the dynamics person to person, and can figure out if that's the right place for them. It's a big change. A CEO is, uh, uh, to, to at least a greater extent than any of us are, master of their own destiny and, and can implement decisions relatively quickly. Once they join up into our field, it's a participative process, and the decision making is longer, it's more arduous, it's less clear, and, and the effect they can have in the companies is similarly uh, diffused. And I think a lot of CEOs find that very frustrating when they come in and actually see our business. Um, uh, uh, Anita, do you, do you think that certain industry segments might lend themselves better to the next gen fund managers. So if you thought of a fund that was focused on web 2.0, internet investments versus a fund that was focused on uh, semiconductors or biotech, life sciences. Um, sure, I, you know, I think in terms of looking at these, um, these managers, um, the, our preference is to find one you know, with a niche focus, um, you know, versus trying to be all things to all people, and you know, and and definitely having a proven 
uh, proven track record in um, in uh, in that area. Um, so, but in terms of specific area, I you know I I, I don't think so. I think it just uh, depends on the the team itself and whether again that they. Um, uh, our team that uh, can demonstrate that they are able to source, add value, and successfully exit um, their, their investments.